Visit sayawright.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, Eric Grant from Sayawright. In this video series, we're going to show you how to redo an entire power boat, the upholstery, the flooring, the side panels, and more, including this motor cover, and make a used power boat look brand new. It's true, you can buy a used power boat and save thousands compared to buying a new one, and you can make the entire thing look brand new, just like we did in these videos. In this tutorial video, we'll be replacing the old carpet flooring. And here it is after being replaced with the luxury woven vinyl flooring fabric from Sailrite. Not only that, but we'll also show you how to recover the deck access hatch cover. Let's get started. Step one, removing the old carpet. We're gonna try to use this uh, carpet in the boat as a pattern for our flooring. So I'm gonna unscrew uh, some of the rigging that basically captures the carpeting and hopefully we can rip it up without destroying it. Now if we destroy it, we'll have to use Duraskrim pattern material to create a pattern, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna do all, undo all of the uh, stuff that holds the carpet in place and we'll show you what's next. Oh, thankfully, the glue is not holding at all, which is good, which means we can take up this and use it as a pattern pretty nicely. Now, if yours is sticking too well, you may have to make a pattern out of Duraskrim. So we're going to try to use this as our pattern. If your old flooring cannot be used as a pattern, Chapter 4 will show you how to pattern. In this chapter, we're going to cut our flooring to size using the old carpet as a pattern. So this is the outside surface, and it's facing down on top of the flooring material. This is the right side, so it's down. So we have everything lined up well, and I'm going to just take a grease pencil, and I'm going to mark the underside with this grease pencil, making sure everything stays in line. Now this goes over the edge. We'll have a second piece that's glued on here with a seam here. We could have avoided have this by having more fabric, but that would have cost us a whole nother yard of fabric. Now they have a slit here, probably because it didn't fit around the motor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark it here so that if I have to cut it, I can do so later, but I'm not gonna cut it right now. So I'm gonna put an X on this but it's there as a reference. And we'll do the same thing over here. We're gonna cut this off and pattern elsewhere with it. So that's flush there and we'll cut this one off too. And we'll position this on some of the scrap. We used three yards of Chilowich. Had we ordered four yards, the flooring would have been one continuous piece without having to add cut sections together. Before gluing, let's test or dry fit the vinyl woven flooring. So we vacuumed and now we're just mopping to make sure the floor is as clean as possible and we're gonna do a dry fit. We didn't show it, but when we were cutting out the flooring, we made a small hole for the ski pylon. Here, I'm making it slightly larger since uh, it is in the right spot, and then I can push it over the ski pylon. After confirming the dry fit of the flooring, we'll cut off the triangular pieces from that small hole. So there's a seat that goes here, so everything back here is going to be hidden. The flooring at this location will be covered by a back bench later on. But here I used a razor knife because I didn't cut this opening like I did on that side. So I just cut a little slit here and let this uh, relax. And our fit is pretty good, our dry fit. If you come all the way up here, everything fits great. This is a little bit off here. And we'll, we either need to trim that, but notice how much we're, we lost over here. So the carpet obviously was not, in a, it didn't have a perfect shape to it. Everything over here is great, but here it is not. So what are we gonna do because we have a almost a three quarter inch gap here. But here it's pretty much on. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a slit here and have a joint and we're gonna match it up uh, and cut off obviously this excess so that it fits around this base. And then uh, try to match up the pattern and put a separate, separate piece in there. We only have to pattern for a small section, but the principles for patterning are covered in this chapter if you can't use your old flooring as a pattern, so watch. 
Here we're using Super 88 as a glue to stick down the Duraskrim pattern material that's available from Sailrite. If you want to use 3M Super 77 spray adhesive, it too works beautifully for this. We've cut a small piece of Duraskrim pattern material to the approximate size, obviously oversize, and we apply it down to the surface that we need to pattern. Because we use the spray glue adhesive, it's easy to apply it and work out any wrinkles or bubbles in the pattern material so it lays perfectly flat against all hard objects. If you run into a corner like this, simply take your scissors and cut a slit down to the surface that you are patterning to allow it to go around that obstacle. Then baste it down. If you have large areas to pattern, you may want to use double-sided tape, part number 129 that's available from Sailrite, to stick it around the perimeter instead of using a spray glue. However, if you use the spray glue, you can see that you can get that pattern material down perfectly flat. So it's up to you. Now we'll use a Sharpie marker and mark around the perimeter where we want that flooring to stop. Be sure to also mark with your Sharpie marker what is the outside surface because you can easily uh, get confused with what is the right side and the wrong side of your pattern material. Now we can take up the pattern material and use it for a pattern. We are going to cut the pattern out with scissors right on those lines. The vinyl mesh flooring that we've chosen doesn't really have a distinctive pattern, but yours may depending on what you choose. Matching up your vinyl flooring pattern may be necessary for two reasons. First, you may be able to reduce the amount of flooring required and use up the cut scraps, saving you money. And the second is because the section you are flooring may be too large for the size of flooring on hand, and joining sections together resolves that issue. Okay, so what we've done is we've lined this up so that the pattern looks good. Okay, and uh, I'm going to uh, cut right into that and right over here so I know where this is. So I'm just making a notch basically. Okay, now we can move this aside. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to use Super 88 adhesive and I'm going to spray some on this so I can get my pattern nice and flat. And now that I have those marks, I know exactly where it needs to go. Outside surface needs to be facing down because this is the wrong side. There's my mark over here. We'll match it up perfectly and make sure that it's smooth. In lieu of using the spray glue, you could just use weighted sandbags, but this really works well. Nice. As you can see, everything is nice and smooth when using the spray glue for pattern material. Next up, we're going to apply the glue and install our flooring. I'm using AAT 390 available at Sarite in an eighth inch trowel. And I have my piece in here, and we're going to start up here at the top. So I'm going to move that out of the way here. and. We're going to put some of this adhesive down. Now you have a working time of about 10 minutes or so, or 15 minutes before it becomes uh, tacky. The most common mistake when using AAT390 is to apply the flooring before the adhesive becomes tacky. Now we don't want to put the flooring down until it uh, becomes a little bit tacky. If it's not tacky enough before the flooring is put down, it may take several days for it to adhere. I'm using an eighth inch trowel, as I said before. So while that's tacking up, I'm going to work on the other side. Now we don't have to worry about the glue on the, on the sides because we're not going to be putting a boat blanket there. So I don't have to worry about cleaning that up. We've applied the AAT glue to two sides, approximately a three foot section. And once the other side has uh, been applied, the glue on the opposite side has become tacky enough to uh, apply our flooring. So we will apply it at the appropriate spot and then press down to make sure all bubbles are worked out starting from the center. A wet rag can be used to clean up any of the adhesive that is still wet. If it dries completely, use an adhesive remover like 3M Specialty Adhesive Remover.
We're using an acrylic cutting pad that has smooth edges to apply pressure to the flooring and work out any wrinkles and apply pressure so it adheres well. We started at the front of the boat and are now working our way back, working on a three foot section approximately at a time. We have no glue back here. Because this boat has a ski pylon, we have to apply the uh, flooring over it, which makes it a little bit more difficult to position it. We have not applied the AAT glue everywhere, only a three foot section near the front, so we can position the flooring exactly where it needs to be uh, before we start working towards the bow of the boat. We recommend using disposable gloves and if you get glue on your hands, use a rag and wipe it off. It actually wipes off fairly easily with a wet rag. Then you'll be able to use your hands on the flooring surface and position it. Again, any excess that's still wet can be removed with a wet rag or if it's dried slightly, you can use 3M adhesive remover available at Sailrite. Cleaner. Here we're using the 3M specialty adhesive remover on a rag and we will clean up that excess glue that is seeped through the seam here. We did find that a seam was required because we want to put on the port side or starboard side first and then work on the opposite side. So we're going to put the seam right in the center. Uh, previously in the carpet it was off to the left, I believe, or right. In doing this we can lift up the flooring on one side of the boat all the way to where we adhered it and apply more of the AAT uh, adhesive for indoor and outdoor applications as seen here with our eighth inch trowel. When we have a three to four foot section done, we'll work on the opposite side of the boat and apply the glue while the other side tacks up. Okay, this should be tacky enough now and I'm on the outside of the boat and we're gonna put this down. I've already made sure my gloves are clean. You want to work all any kind of air bubbles out from the center to the edges. Now the glue stops right here, so all I have to be concerned about is that one area. Good, now I'm going to get in and do the other side. We didn't show it, but the other side is adhered. Now we'll just lift up the remainder of the flooring, apply more of the glue, and then bond it down in the same way that we've shown before. Make sure it tacks up. So this is where the seam's going to be, and I actually like to leave about a, a quarter inch unglued because the glue actually seeps, and I don't really want it to seep over the edge if I can avoid it. So we'll see what happens there. We have to let this tack up for a while. And while we're doing that, I don't think I'm going to do this side until I get this side down so I can actually stand on that. But be careful about standing on it when it hasn't cured completely because it can actually shift on you. Okay, it's tacked up. There's no skin on the glue. We don't want it to skin up on us. We're going to put this down in the same manner that we did before. Okay, so the flooring is almost down. We have one last piece. I'm waiting for it to tack up. After this is done, we're going to put boat blanket on the hull here and come down to the, uh, the flooring that we're putting on. So this is a Chilowich flooring. We also have a brand called Infinity. They both work great. They're different widths and obviously different patterns. Let's go ahead and put it on. Okay, so here's that seam 
And that's the first thing I'm going to work on is just matching it up. Boy, I can't even tell that there's a seam there. If you keep the glue away, like we did the second time, it definitely is better. It doesn't seep through at all. Yet I can feel that I'm pushing the glue closer to that seam. She's matched up beautifully. All right, we're going to smooth the rest down like we have shown before. In this chapter, we're going to apply the flooring to the deck hatch cover. This is one of the floorboards for the power boat, and it has carpet uh, with a handle that we're going to take off here. And uh, it looks like it's fiberglass. So we're going to remove the old carpet and we're going to put on our Infinity or Chilowich flooring. It appears to be glued in place, no staples. And there is a little trick to this. We're going to actually have to put the uh, flooring on, cut away some of the rubber around the edge, uh, and then wrap it around the side because this, uh, we don't want just a raw edge at the top. So the, I'm going to do the first task of removing the carpet which has been glued to it and this can be a little tricky. Once I get the edge out we'll be able to peel it back as you can see. I'm using a little bit of 3M specialty adhesive remover on this and what we want to do it doesn't have to be perfectly clean but we do want to have any of this excess uh, glue and rubber taken off so it's a fairly smooth surface. Doesn't have to be perfect, you just have to have any bumps taken off. This is the piece we cut out for the uh, floorboard covering. And what I want to do is I want to try to match the pattern as best as possible, this direction and also that direction. Now, this direction is obviously more important than anything. So I'm going to leave excess so that I can wrap around the board on the sides, but yet match the pattern. Again, our flooring doesn't right have a there. very distinctive pattern. So I'm just cutting it oversize so that we can wrap a little bit around the edges. You may have a flooring that has a distinctive pattern, and in that case, you'll have to be very careful about pattern matching. We don't have to worry too much about it. Okay, so the pattern is lined up with this piece that we cut on here. So I like the way it looks, it looks good, and I wanna mark it with a marker here, and then follow this up and mark it here, and then mark it here. So that's where we want this pattern to basically be, right there. So now I can move this out of the way, and this will be glued on with excess. So I'm going to transfer this mark to this side, and then come over to the back side a little bit so that we can see where it is. So you can cut a notch with scissors, but I'm going to use an actual notcher right where that spot is and give it a little notch. Then I'm going to turn this upside down. And I'm going to make sure that everything fits perfectly with those that line matched up with my notch. Now it would be nice if we were able to use a razor blade and just go around the edge and then the idea is that you want to cut only the foam but not the mesh material. So let's pretend that we've cut that and we can peel away the foam. But the problem with using a razor blade is that sometimes you cut through the mesh material. So what I like to do is I like to use a really a, a knife that allows me to get just a small blade like that. Then I don't have to worry as much about how much pressure I put down uh, against uh, the uh, uh, foam because it won't cut through that mesh hardly at all. Problem is that this can't go hug against the edge of the board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a grease pencil and with the board in the appropriate spot, I'm gonna mark around it and then we can move the board and use this instead of this. So now that we have it traced around, I can move this out of the way and we can carefully use this and cut on that line and hopefully not cut the mesh. So we're going to cut all the way around this and then we'll show you what's next. Okay, so now we're just going to peel this off. It'll stop at our cut line. Yeah, look at that. Nice. We're going to keep doing this around the perimeter. So I have some plastic on the table so I don't get overspray on the table. 
I'm going to use a headliner adhesive. 3M General Trim can also be used for this. We're going to spray the surface of the uh, hatch cover and we're going to coat it pretty good because we want this to stick well, especially around the perimeters, but also in the middle. And then once this is done, when we get a good coating on it, we're going to coat only uh, at this point the rubber of this. Now notice that I didn't get all the rubber off. That's because you don't need to. We're basically just getting the bulk of it off so it wraps around the corner. So we're going to coat both these really well. You do have a good working time, so don't feel like you have to rush. Uh, but you don't want to go slow either or take a lunch break. Okay, after the glue has become tacky on both surfaces and doesn't transfer to your fingers, we can move this on top and I'm going to get a second helper here, the cameraman, Seth. And we obviously need to come this direction because it goes the other way. Where are you going? <laughs> Goes this way. Oh, you were gonna flip it over. All right, we got it. Okay, so we're gonna try to put it on on top of the the black surface only. Good. Nice. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm, before I curl the edges over, I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to make sure that it's down with no air bubbles in it. So I'm working from the center out. I turned my plastic over so I didn't, won't get glue on this side. Should be dry enough that it won't affect the table. So now we're going to take our headliner adhesive or 3M general trim adhesive and we're going to spray it on the edges fairly heavily and on this top ridge where it's going to be folded back. And we want to get the, the, the uh, mesh as well and we're going to do that all around it. So I moved the plastic while my glue was tacking up and I'm just going to start at the center here at the front and I'm going to wrap it around. Now if it isn't sticking well, which it isn't sticking really well yet, uh, we need to let the glue um, become the solvents to evaporate more. So I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Okay, so now it's definitely sticking much better and I just want to crease it well along that edge. Uh, that's the first task that we need to do. To do a rounded corner, cut away some of the excess, leaving enough, obviously. Let's just cut that away for now. And then you're going to have to create some wrinkles in here. So we're going to create a little wrinkle here and then distribute another one in here because it's going to have to take, you're going to have to take up excess fabric. So we just want to create some wrinkles in here to get around this corner until you get back to the straightaway like that. That's pretty good. Now let's cut away some of this excess. There's just too much on it. So here I am at my 90 degree corner and I have enough fabric to, to come over that. So I'm just going to cut this a little teeny bit long here. And I think and then I'll bring this in and I'm just going to cut it right there. There we go. At these uh, smooth curves, what I typically do is I just cut out the wrinkles that have to be in there and then I just press it down like that. So we're going to do that to all of these little excess ridges. Nice. Okay, we're still going to clean this side, so I don't want to hear it in the video that, hey, that you should have cleaned it. We're going to clean it. Here's what she looks like. The edges are nice. If you have any glue that's felt on the outside surface, 
like there's a little bit here, you can use a 3M specialty adhesive remover. And I do recommend that you do this right away because the longer you let it sit, the more it, it uh, sets up. Okay, there's a little handle in here and I can feel the hole. So we're gonna cut a small X to make sure that it is the hole. Yes, it is. And then we're gonna carefully cut around this hole so that we can get this inserted back in here. Okay, so we have a rough opening and that's all that's required. And then we'll screw it in. The flooring is finished, but we still need to complete the boat blanket on the hall. That's coming up in a second video. The materials and tools list is next. We used a Chilowich floor covering fabric, but Infinity Luxury Woven Vinyl Flooring available from Sayrite works just as well. For flooring materials like this, we highly recommend the AAT390 Marine and Exterior Adhesive. If you have to do your own patterning, use Duraskrim pattern material available from Sailrite and Super 88 or 3M Super 77 spray adhesives for the pattern material. This video is part of our Speedboat Makeover series. Be sure to check out the other tutorial videos as we continue to make an old Speedboat look brand new using upholstery supplies and tools from Sailrite. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.